Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. All right, got a pretty interesting thing we want to pose in this particular video. And uh, Chad and I got to kind of experimenting and we kind of figured, do you really get a ton of gain going from a 44 mag in a revolver up to a 44 magnum in a rifle? Well, the short answer is, heck yes you do. <laughs> it is a lot of extra power. We thought that we would revisit the all-weather Henry in 44 Magnum. Uh, we picked up a little optic here through Big Daddy Unlimited, a uh, little loophole VX Freedom. This is just a 2 to 7 by 33, a uh, nice low-power optic. You know, I had it dialed down to 2 just for the close-range shooting there in the intro. But we thought we'd drop this optic on there and do a little bit more formal accuracy testing, which we did. You know, we were getting about 2.5-inch groups, 3-inch groups at 100 yards. Uh, so really good accuracy that we were getting out of the uh, Henry here. But... Um, we are going to shoot this gun a little bit more and have some fun with it. So it's a dual prong video. But the question we want to pose is, we were out getting some, uh, collecting some velocity data the other day. And we confirmed it just now, uh, by the way. We were getting this uh, gun dialed in and Chad was doing some stuff where he was collecting velocity. So we're like, well, the heck with it. We'll shoot this over the, uh, over the chrono and see what happens. And we registered a chrono reading that kind of surprised us. And that's what led us to make this video today okay so let's look at the numbers all right federal fusion 240 grain okay now this data is going to change depending on what ammo you run obviously but we had at the time some winchester super x 240 grain which we're out of right now so i picked up some fusion this is the most powerful factory 44 mag ammo that i could find at our local uh, sporting goods store let's look at the velocity that it shows on the box muzzle velocity of 1290 feet per second yielding 885 foot-pounds of energy. Okay, that's not a slouch, right? That's a lot of energy. Four-inch Smith & Wesson, 629, okay? 1,368 feet per second, yielding 997 foot-pounds of energy. That's a four-inch barrel. All right, Federal Fusion 240 grain. 20-inch barrel with a 1 and 16-inch twist, twist right-hand twist in the Henry Allweather 44 Magnum. You ready for this? 1,763 feet per second on the velocity, 1,657 foot-pounds of energy. That's a 395 feet per second increase with a 66% increase in power. Yeah, buddy. So the answer is, you're absolutely right. You better bet your socks, <laughs> bet your hat or bet your under drawers too, that a rifle most certainly increases the potency of a revolver cartridge. We're gonna perform a similar test with 357 Magnum. Uh, we could probably even do 44 Special at some point, but this is just an initial observation. That longer barrel gives you a big boost in velocity. Also, the thing I like about this Henry, besides the fact that it's all weather, this is like the perfect type of hunting rifle, but it's also super, super easy to shoot. I mean, I hit everything that I was aiming at exactly where I was looking. Everything is just so easy to shoot with a rifle. Now you don't get the you know compact nature of a revolver like you do with the Smith. You know, this has obviously its own use as well. I mean, some people hunt with handguns as well, no problem. I've seen plenty of people take deer with revolvers, not a problem. But you cannot deny the velocity increase you get out of the longer barrel. So we thought we'd make this quick video just to kind of show you guys that, man, there is a considerable difference, okay? All right, I got a little bit of ammo here. I'm going to load the Henry and we'll, uh, we'll shoot some more of those sodi pops down there. You know, where I see this rifle really excelling for a lot of people is really as a, you know, 100-yard food plot gun or something like that. You know, if you, uh, if you want a, a rifle that you can take a deer humanely at 100 yards, now I don't have the data on me right this very moment in terms of what the what the drop in energy is by the time it goes 100 yards, but I'd be willing to bet that you are most certainly 110% above 1,000 foot-pounds of energy, even at 100 yards. You look at the energy that is delivered out of a four-inch revolver, and you are actually getting into the territory where you're only at 997 foot-pounds at the muzzle. So you're gonna get a really rapid decrease in energy as the projectile travels down range. I'm not doubting some of you guys can't take a shot with a revolver at 100 yards on a deer. No problem. People do it all the time. But this, this rifle, you maintain that energy out to longer ranges. 
We'll probably shoot this thing out to a little bit longer range today, maybe 200 yards. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. We, we might get out and maybe try to sling some of these pills in at 200. And we're also going to calcu uh, calculate, listen to me, calculate. Let me get my cackleberry eggs and not their pan, son, and just make me some cackleberries. If you know what cackleberries are, that's eggs. That's redneck term for eggs. We're going to do some calculations and figure out what our bullet drop is and what our loss of energy is. Sorry, I had the uh, Ozark Hills come out there for just a second. I can't help it. Guilty. as charged. All right. <clears throat> we'll shoot a couple more rounds. I mean, I think you guys get the idea. But there ain't no way I'm about to leave those sodas there with these butt stomp infusions in this gun. All right. Hey. Well. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Woo. Oh yeah. I can't count. Woo, son. That is some energy. I mean, if a deer walks out and he's 50, 60 yards away on a food plot, stick a fork in him, he's done. But just for fun, let's step this thing out to a little bit longer range. Now that we got this thing dialed in really nice, we got some good hot ammo, I got a few rounds of the fusion left. Let's take a few shots at long range and just see how the gun does. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna step that out on the range a bit here with the all-weather Henry 44 Magnum. All right, we crunched a couple of numbers. Now, Chad couldn't find a BC on the projectile that they use on the Fusion, but this is a, a good general reference here for the amount of, of loss and power that we get out of both guns. With the Henry at 100 yards, as we said, uh, we've got 1,416 feet per second yielding uh, 1,068 foot-pounds of energy. So you're already talking more power than the revolver has at the muzzle, okay? At 100 yards, the 4-inch Smith & Wesson yields 1133 feet per second yielding 684 foot pounds of energy which is still no slouch that's a lot of power okay at 200 yards which is the the shot we're about to attempt here with the henry we've still got 1163 feet per second yielding 720 foot pounds of energy that is a considerable amount of energy that's that's more energy than a nine millimeter has at the muzzle <laughs> so yeah it's tracking at 200 yards uh, the 4-inch Smith & Wesson is going to give us 998, yielding 459 foot-pounds of energy. Now, bear in mind, I don't have the precise BC, so those numbers could fluctuate a little bit, but that gives us a pretty good uh, overall profile to go off of. Now, I've got 10 of the Fusions in here. We're going to take a couple of shots at 100. Uh, we double-checked our zero. It should be dead on the money. Okay, uh, let's lob a couple of rounds out to 200. Have a little fun. This is a really nice gun to shoot from the bench or offhand. It's very comfortable. I'm going to give it a two-minute hold, Chad, and we're just going to drop one in. Send it when you're ready. Center mass, slightly right. Yep. I think two minutes is the ticket. And that went right over the top of the head. Okay. Well, now I'm using the right hold here. Let's see. Just right of your first impact. Gotcha. Okay. Very cool. So it's a challenge to shoot these things out to 200 yards. That was high again. Yep. What the heck? I'm using the right hold. Let me use less hold. Maybe it's only about a minute and a half hold to get out there. No, it was two minutes. That's where the two minute crosshair was, was down near the bottom. All right, well, let me just make sure I'm squeezing the trigger good. Wow. Well, you remember it's a pistol projectile too, so. Very strange, all right. Let's test again at 100. Wow, that round hit to the right. 
So sure enough, All right, I think I'm, we're on the on the money now. All right, I'm gonna reload this gun. That triangulation there, once I kind of figured out what was going on, probably what, about three or four inches? Yeah, three or four. That's not bad. No. The gun's perfectly capable, as long as I'm capable. So <laughs> let, me, uh, let me top this gun off and we're gonna, uh, I'm, I'm actually out of fusion. We're gonna switch to some different ammo and uh, we'll go ahead and keep trying these uh, shots here. The gun will definitely reach out to 200, no problem. Um, not bad at all. Very, very good accuracy, if I can do my part. You know, like Chad said, it is a pistol round. 200 would be stretching the legs on this thing for taking a shot at a deer, but if you were comfortable doing it, it would certainly, certainly, no problem, uh, humanely dispatch a deer. And I, I definitely would imagine it's much easier to take a shot 200 yards with this than a revolver, uh, obviously. But at 100, man, this thing will just absolutely stack them in there. Really nice hunting rifle. So uh, let me reload the tube. This time uh, we'll try some different ammo, have a little bit of fun. All right, we're going to take a couple more shots, this time with some Federal Power Shock. It's a slightly lower velocity. I don't think our point of impact shift's going to be too much. May have to hold a little bit more, but we're just going to give it a try and uh, lob a couple of rounds into 200. Just a fun exercise with this rifle uh, to see what we can do here. Uh, Chad's gonna spot, I'm just gonna have a little fun here. Just right up near the shoulder. Gotcha. Pretty close. Gotcha. Strange, very strange. Okay. Right in the neck. Good group. Maybe. Yep. Very cool stuff. You know, it, it would certainly be a challenge to take a shot at a deer at that distance. I, I feel like, you know, maybe with a, a really good load, like maybe that fusion, it would be very consistent in putting it in there. I mean, I really always felt like these things excelled really, really good uh, when it came to 100 yard like deer plot or something like that, or you know Georgia deer hunting where a lot of your shots are under 100 yards. This is an ideal gun and the recoil is almost non-existent on it. Um, so the Henry's delivering the goods, but I really wanted this video to be about the power differences between 44 Magnum out of a you know shorter barrel and a revolver and then moving up to a rifle and the power differences are pretty considerable. So if you guys would like to see us revisit this video with maybe 357 Magnum or 327 Federal or any of the other you know, revolver cartridges that are chambered in you know, rifles, that's something we can probably accommodate. So let me know if you like this style of video. Maybe we can do more. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Always a fun day to send some 44 mag down range. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters for supporting us directly. Thank you. You're awesome. Want to take a moment to thank all the folks who purchase man cans over on our website. Uh, it's a mystery box we sell every month. All the money that we earn off of those boxes goes right back to supporting the channel and to putting together videos like this. Definitely want to take a moment to thank all the folks that purchase t-shirts, such as the one I'm wearing here, the snazzy tee, over on Ballistic Inc. 
All the funds we earn off t-shirt sales go right back into supporting the channel. So if you love what we do and you want to support what we do, those are the most direct ways that you can support us if you wish to. So for those of you who see value in what we do and choose to support us, thank you so much for helping out the channel, keeping us going in these uh, odd times for YouTubers. So thank you very much. Appreciate you watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.